Russian nukes in space. Multiple sources are telling CNN tonight that the U.S. has new intelligence on Russia's efforts to deploy a nuclear anti-satellite system in space. So this actually comes after the House Intelligence Committee Chair Mike Turner today raised the alarm. He announced he's made information concerning a, quote, serious national security threat available to all members of Congress to review. Now, keep in mind, if nukes were launched to the U.S. from space, they would be undetectable. And this news gives ominous context to the fact that one of Putin's mouthpieces floated this very idea on Russian state television nine months ago, as found by Russian media analyst Julia Davis. I think it's time to turn up the heat. We understand that all drones and everything else work for Americans only while Starlink exists. So if we carefully launch our nukes in space, there will be no Starlink left. Jim Shudo is out front. And Jim, what more are you learning about this intelligence? So this is what we know at this, this hour. It's new U.S. intelligence. It's about a new Russian military capability, specifically an anti-satellite capability with a nuclear component. So the idea to target U.S. or partner satellites in space, including surveillance satellites, nuclear or early warning sh- satellites, uh, with a nuclear component, which, of course, would you know, you know, expand the ability to destroy those capabilities in space, considered serious enough that the U.S. shared it with its Five Eyes partners, its closest il- intel partners, including the U.K., Canada, etc. I should note this as well, and I've spoken to three people who are read in on this latest intelligence, including two lawmakers, and they told me, one, this is not a clear and present danger. This is something that Russia is experimenting with, looking into, designing. It is not currently deployed and not considered something that will soon be deployed. That's key. Second of all, Aaron, they've all said to me that this is highly sensitive intelligence, including the sourcing involved. So they were surprised uh, that you have a member of Congress that was going so public with this at this time. Uh, So that's very important. As you said, it was Mike Turner who started with something kind of cryptic about a new threat to the U.S., and it was reporters who dug in to figure out exactly what he was talking about. But then later in the day, you saw even one of his Republican colleagues, the speaker, Mike Johnson, saying in his words, there is no cause for alarm right now. So it's serious, serious enough that they're sharing with their partners, but not one that is considered a serious threat today. All right. Well, Jim Shudo, thank you very much. Of course, mm-hmm. one other thing Jim points out there, uh, the sourcing is very crucial, right? If, uh, if this is something that could threaten a crucial intelligence source uh, that's providing the U.S. information, that is hugely significant as well. The Democratic Congressman Seth Moulton joins me now, and I appreciate your time, Congressman. So what can you tell us about this threat, what you've learned about it? Well, look, I I think the speaker is right. Um, This is a serious issue, uh, but it's something that we're working hard to address. And uh, defense intelligence, uh, defense officials, uh, some of whom I spoke with again today, uh, are working on how to address this to make sure we keep Americans safe. It's important to understand that what uh, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee has done here, Mike Turner, is fundamentally leak information. He is an intelligence leaker. Because what he did is he decided to take highly sensitive compartmented intelligence. That means that even if you have a very, you know, like a top secret clearance or something, um, you only have access to the intelligence if you have a need to know. And he shared it with every member of Congress, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who, of course, we all know cannot be trusted to keep this secret. And indeed, it only took a few hours for the details of this weapon system to come out. So, you know, he may think he has very principled reasons to do this, but he's put our national security at risk. He's put the sources of intelligence at risk. He's raised a lot of questions with our allies who, of course, count on us to keep this safe. And he's really inhibited our ability to respond. So so do you believe that he should face penalties? Oh, absolutely. Look, I certainly don't trust him. I certainly don't entrust him. And I I think the House Republican leadership has to uh, really address whether he can continue chairing Uh, this committee. Look, if you asked Edward Snowden, one of the most infamous American leakers, why he leaked that intelligence uh, that, of course, put our national security at risk, he would give you very principled reasons in his mind for doing so. And I'm sure that Mike Turner uh, believes he has very principled reasons for releasing this intelligence. But I'll tell you what, a lot of us really disagree. A lot of Republicans uh, disagree. And certainly, The Defense Department officials who uh, are working to respond to this uh, disagree as well. And you know what, Aaron? He did it because he was offended 
apparently he was offended that he wasn't told about this by the Biden administration. So in other words, he has a partisan reason Mm. for doing this. But there's a problem with that. He and I both sit on the House Armed Services Committee, and I was briefed about this two years ago. I haven't had a problem keeping it a secret secret. But if he just found out about this, apparently he wasn't paying attention. Uh, uh, right, because you're pointing out you knew you were all briefed two years ago. Not, so, not all of us, but right. those of us who needed to know, and, and certainly uh, Chairman Turner could have found out himself. Right, would have been on that list. That's well, right. Well, you know, the, and it's interesting you're talking about the reasons that you understand that he may have done it. Obviously, as you know, there's discussion out there that maybe another reason he did it was to try to get uh, his own party to support aiding Ukraine and realizing that Russia is a clear and present danger. Obviously, that's complete speculation, and, and, and you're giving an informed view. But it does, it does raise the questions about where that bill is, the Ukraine funding bill, right? It passed the Senate, bipartisan vote. You had a 22 GOP uh, senators supporting it. But in the House, you got nothing. Speaker Mike Johnson says he has no intention of bringing it to the floor. Obviously, you want to get this done. You've been very clear about it from the very beginning, Congressman. Do you see any possibility that that Senate bill ever passes the House? Well, Aaron, let's be clear. There are actually a lot of Republicans, a lot of smart, reasonable Republicans who care about our national security, who recognize that supporting Ukraine today is an investment in our national security now and for the future. And they want to support this as well. They want to vote on this bill. It's just the speaker who, of course, is controlled by these extremists in the Republican conference who refuses to bring it up for a vote. You know, he's worried that just by bringing it up to a vote, for allowing democracy to work, for us to actually do our job and vote yes or no on legislation, he's worried he'll lose his job. That's the problem. Congressman Moulton, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Aaron. All right.